Hello, everyone. Welcome to IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Joel Ward, and today joining me is Nick again. Thank you for joining me, Nick. Absolutely, man. Pleasure as always. Yes. So today um, we are going to be talking about the wonderful world of streaming and not just any streaming. We're talking about game streaming. So I know I've touched about streaming and, and how streaming has affected so much in our world, especially as far as Netflix and stuff. But what people don't realize is game streaming is becoming very popular as far as Xbox. And, and now one of the things I've just noticed and I, I, I talked to you about it a little bit is Amazon Luna and Amazon Luna. I have been looking at a lot and, and considering purchasing this once it becomes available um but it, it seems like that streaming uh, for games as far as like xbox and playstation and and uh amazon even and stadia which is also now well stadia has fallen away i don't know if you noticed that but stadia has gone away uh as far as i can see and uh, amazon luna has taken its place but when I, when I talk about streaming uh, um, in the game streaming world, I'm talking about playing from your phone, like playing mainstream titles from your phone. So, Nick, uh, what's your thoughts on this? And do you think it's something that we should continue as, as, a, as, a, as a species doing or is it something we should just give up on? I, I love the convenience of it. Like, I'm not a crazy hardcore gamer by any means, but... I, I used to play a lot, and the idea of being able to open up my phone and start playing some of these games wherever I'm at is really cool. Where I struggle with it is the data. Like, how much data are you going to use to play one of these top games with all these high graphics and all this stuff? Like, I can't afford that data. <laughs> so I usually play it when I have Wi-Fi, and the best Wi-Fi I have is at my house. So why would I play it on the phone? Yeah, and that's one of the things they're talking about, how you can play um... – on the subway and stuff, I'm like, yeah, the data cap, you're going to hit your data max like that day and you're not going to be able to play anymore. So yeah, this is, this is one of those things that's like, it's a great idea. And I, I have actually, so I haven't told you this. I don't think I told you this before, but I actually have played Xbox games from my phone and it's been so cool. Like, but I've done it like from my house. I haven't done it in a coffee shop yet uh, where their Wi-Fi is horrible. So um, yeah, I, I, I have played where I have a gig of internet at my house. I'm thinking, wow, I just play my Xbox. So it's like right. there's people out there who are who are really big like, oh, I'll spend all the money it takes to play on my phone. It, yeah, perks to you. But some of us like, you know, don't want to hit our data max. Even with unlimited data, we can there is still a cap on that. So yeah, I mean the premise is nice. I mean uh, Luna's saying for five dollars a month you can get unlimited hours of play, growing library games, including control, grid, Exodus, uh, Metro Exodus, um, and up to 1080p, 60 FPS, and 4K is coming soon. Now, that what they don't tell you, and what we were just talking about, is it all depends on your connection because you can't just get 4K <laughs> streaming on a poor connection. So, one of the things I think is is great about this, but not great, is um. When you're at home and you're playing, you're like, wow, this is great. But when you get out in the real world and you're on like Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, which right now we really can't do that, you're like, man, this is not that great. So I, I think that this for this idea to continue, um, it needs um, – we need to do – and I talked about this. And if you had a chance to check it out, Nick, uh, my episode about internet, how we need to have free accessible internet throughout different parts of our cities and stuff where we whenever you bounce around to different routers or something or or some kind of same router where you're just you're walking down the street and it's just constantly connecting and and living in a world where we can constantly connect to a to a wi-fi signal um i i know we're not talking about wi-fi but what are your thoughts on that as far as like to help this to the, help this idea grow i think i mean you're obviously going to have the hardcore people that are like yeah, I'll do it. I'll pay it. Whatever it costs, like give it to me. I'm not that type of person. I guess I'm not that person to market to. But I think there definitely has to be, if they want it to be real mainstream and for everyone to mm -hmm. get the most value and bang for their buck, it, like, it's going to have to be cheaper. It's going to have to be better, more reliable. And yeah, like what you said, like being able to not, I guess, hop from, I don't know, cell tower to cell tower, picking up data and worrying about reaching a data cap like that's what holds me back mm -hmm. I've, I've even some of the games i've played because i actually had the x cloud subscription for a little bit because I was, I was playing with it i had just gotten that new razor um i can't remember what it's called is it like the kishi or something 
Uh, yeah, the Razor Kishi. I did. I did a review on that. I removed it because no, it had zero views, so I removed it. But the Razor Kishi is an awesome little controller, and nobody yeah, so, really, I seems know by. So I got that, and I was like, "Oh, cool! Like it's a controller that my phone sets into. Like it's awesome." So I got the X Cloud service, and even at home where I have really good internet connection, trying to play some of the intense games. Like I tried starting Fallout, so it's like I'm curious what's gonna happen. And it was just way too much for the phone to handle. And I have a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Like, it's one oh, of wow. the phones. It's supposed to be one of the most powerful phones out there. And it just struggled. And I don't know if it was because of my internet connection, which is good, or if it's just too much for something that small of a device to handle. Yeah, I I tried to play, what was it, the game? Um, Call of Duty on my phone and i'm not talking about the one you can download from the app store i'm talking about the one that's literally on uh it was black ops the new black ops and it was chugging and i have a galaxy s20 ultra and they said oh you can play on the s20 ultra it's got a great processor no it was chugging and i was like my buddy was like are you okay over there i was like yeah i'm playing for my phone he's like you better get on your xbox because we're losing and i was like well once we lose this game i will jump my xbox and and after that was fine but um I, i upgraded my internet and after that was fine but I think it does come down to uh, the how much um, connection you have as far as like even your home internet. If your home internet's not that great, you're not you're not going to get anywhere with it. It's like tell the family, all right, everyone, shut off all your devices. I'm about to go play fucking Xbox on my phone. <laughs> Grandma, turn off your TV. I'm trying to stream a game. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I, I I literally just talked about this and in, in, um I think it was two episodes ago like about how internet's gotten insane and we just talked about this on the SpaceX one about Starlink. It's like internet is growing at a, like a, a a significant pace as far as like speeds and stuff, but even people aren't willing to pay for those speeds. They're still stuck in the slow internet and and I pay for a gig. I mean I have a gig of internet and my internet's pretty good, but. There are those people who are like, I'm not paying a hundred something dollars for a gig of internet, and then they're like, and and they, you know, that's understandable. But you know, when it comes down to it, the streaming platforms, they say zero latency and stuff, but um, that all depends on your, like they they claim all this stuff, but it all comes down to your connection, and that's what they aren't telling you. Mm-hmm. One of probably the best streaming services and it's not even necessarily a streaming service one of the best experiences that i've had playing in like a remote setting was with the playstation 4 remote play okay i've never played playstation remote play so i have no idea what that is so i actually i had the ps4 i had a playstation vita which is just like the little handheld okay psp version 2 or whatever and if you have a good connection at your home where the PlayStation set up and a good connection wherever you're at, you can actually stream the game from your PlayStation at home into the Vita handheld system wherever you're at. And I actually had hmm. decent decent connection and decent success with that. But yeah, you were very limited on the games. Like I always played MLB the show on PlayStation. Okay. And the reaction of it is way too fast. So by the time I swing, the ball's already in the, the glove. So I, I couldn't play that game. But I did get away with some shooters. I don't think Call of Duty would have worked, but I got away with some like first-person shooters doing it that way. With the the xCloud and all that stuff, I just had too bad of an experience with it. Yeah, and I don't know. The xCloud, um, I, I was the first. I got on the beta on that, and I, I liked it. But like whenever I went to play it, I actually went to play off of Wi-Fi, and it disconnected me because it wanted Wi-Fi. So when I was out, I was at an airport one time when it was first out and announced, and it was before COVID, so this is prior COVID. Um, but I was playing it, and I was like, man, this is this is okay, but not great. And um, it, it I, I will say, like the experience, if, if they want us to experience good gaming, uh, and they're saying you can play from any device. Now, even Amazon Luna, now, I, I don't know. Like, this, the commercial seems great. But um, it seems like it's it says it streams directly from the cloud onto your screens. Um, experience gaming, and here's, I just seen this kicker. It says experience gaming anywhere there's high-speed Wi-Fi. So, they, they don't, they don't tell you that, though. But they put in little writing, experience with high-speed Wi-Fi. So, you know, and that's one of the things Xbox didn't explain to me. Was that you needed a good connection or you need Wi-Fi. It, and and they, they said you can go off data and it didn't let me go off data. Now, I think there might have been something in the settings I wasn't clicking. But 
I, I just my experience wasn't great. And and you know when Stadia was announced, uh, Stadia was has gotten so much bad rap, and I really don't know what Amazon Luna is gonna get. Um, but as far as like. If you're going to stream games, um, Xbox and PlayStation are the ones to do it because they're the ones with the main consoles. Uh, Nintendo, you have a Switch, you take that with you. You really don't need to stream it. You plug the games in, you got it. You don't really need to stream them. Um, but, like, you got Xbox and stuff. I would love – now, tell me if you like this or not. I would love a handheld Xbox. Like, if there was, like, a handheld, like, kind of like a Switch – but it was an Xbox. Like I would just love that. Like if there was something like that. That'd be awesome. Um, See, but I, I'm a PlayStation guy, so I'm I'm all on PlayStation. <laughs> I I've never owned an Xbox, so I was really bummed when they got rid of the the Vita and them not like porting some of the AAA titles and stuff like that. There, I was a huge yeah. I uh, kind of killed it off. But I think yeah. I the never success of the Switch. They're definitely going to try to get back into the handheld game. Yeah, I never got into playstation i uh, see so many of us it, with my buds we were always playing halo so it's like you know halo was the go-to um so none of us really i have a playstation 3 and it just sits here and i play xbox more than I play playstation 3 i play the switch more than i play the playstation 3 so it's like i don't know but there is now i will say there as far as like games go and i know we're getting a lot off topic but there there is some games that are main title to um playstation that i'm like wow i would so play it like i think the last of us is actually a uh, a, a PlayStation only title because I've okay. never, I don't think I've seen it on Xbox. See, MLB The Show was the biggest one for me. It was only a PlayStation title, and I think now, like with the new game that's coming out this year, I think they actually started creating it for Xbox. Okay. And allowing crossplay. So it's one of the first games aside from like Fortnite, I think that, or maybe Call of Duty, that you can actually play across console. PlayStation was very. I guess stingy on that front when Xbox started opening up to Nintendo Switch. Yeah, and um, I actually start realizing the crossplay. Like whenever I'm playing Xbox or Xbox, when well, I'm playing Xbox, but when I'm playing um, Call of Duty, there's a lot of like computer players and like you know on that and PlayStation players and like we're cross playing and 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 it's not bad. But I will say what they've noticed is a lot of the computer players cheat, and it's like it's that's a topic for another day. But, um, but as far as like the streaming things go, we got Stadia, you've got Xbox Cloud or X Cloud or whatever you want to call it. Um, now it's changed names so many times. Um, and you've got like Amazon Luna and Steam. Steam even allows you it doesn't it's not a streaming platform, but it allows you to carry your devices. And Nvidia Shield, I do you remember Nvidia Shield? Yeah, I, I remember that. There's actually the GeForce app. I think that's okay. Nvidia. And I tried that one. So I, I tried GeForce. I tried Stadia. I tried xCloud. I didn't even know Luna existed until you just brought it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I uh, Amazon it's Luna is... Use. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, it's, it's weird because with like GeForce and mm -hmm. Stadia, like you still have to purchase the game. So I had bought a game on Stadia and I had to pay like 40 bucks or whatever it was to get that game to play it. <laughs> and I know GeForce is the same way. Like you, I think you could port it over or stream it over from Steam. If you had bought it on Steam, you could actually bring it over into GeForce and play that way. But you still have to pay the subscription. So why would you pay a subscription and pay to have the game when you can only play it like now Stadia going away? That game I'm assuming is going to go away. I'm not going to have that game anymore. It well, it looks funny. like Stadia is still around. It's just yeah. when last I heard, they were closing down their offices or something on a news article. I don't know 100% how much how true that is. But Stadia has been, for the last few months, has been getting a horrible rap. And so many people have been like, Stadia, the, the worst gaming platform you can buy. Um, and even my brother was not interested in it. He just was like turned off by it. He was like, this is stupid. It's a controller. You connect your TV. You have to have the Chromecast, all that. Uh, it didn't get a good rap. Um, now, Amazon Luna, from what I'm looking at, it basically, um, you just connect your controller you get from them onto your Mac, your PC, your tablet, your phone. Um, yeah, it just looks... It says play screen to screen without missing a step in your game. I, I would be curious to see how that connects between all of them. If you have to load up an app or or if it just jumps, if you click a button, it jumps to the screen. I, I'd be interested to see how that works because something like that, 
I would be interested in playing. But like you said, you had to pay for that game in Stadia, and then you had to pay the monthly subscription. See, I'm not about that. If I had to pay a monthly subscription for game titles, and then I'm also paying to buy the game itself, I'm just going to stick with, well, I know, Xbox. I'm not going to go with a gaming streaming service. Like, Stadia is not our Stadia. Luna is nice, and I'd like to see the reviews coming out with it in the next few months to whenever it launches. Um, but if it's something like you're saying where you have to pay for the title, I'm not interested in that. Well, and, and doesn't Xbox kind of have something like that where you can stream, like if you purchase a game, can you not stream it to like a laptop somewhere else? Yeah, I think you can. And as far as I know, it has to be the digital copy. If you own a disc, if as long as it's in your Xbox, you can. But if it's if it's if it's not, then it's it's not digital, then you can't play it. So, so I mean that I have a I have a little bit of trouble with the cost of paying for a streaming service when you can buy the game, you can have it, mm -hmm. never have to worry about it going away. I, I I guess it might just be me. I don't think I would personally get a use. Like I'm not gonna go play fifty different games. If I play a game, I usually play it from beginning to end before mm -hmm. moving on to the next one. So I'm always going to be playing one game at a time, and I'm going to be paying. Maybe it takes me three months to get through to it. I'm going to be paying enough to purchase the game already by the time I actually get through the game. So why not? Yeah. The game up front, and if I want to play it on the go, bring my freaking controller and stream it on my computer. Yeah, and that's I don't know that 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 also is kind of a turn off to me. It's like. Um, if you're paying that monthly subscription, whereas Xbox, you pay okay for a year. It's sixty. I think they may have upped the price, but it was sixty dollars for a year subscription to Xbox for the live. Then you're sixty dollars, almost sixty something dollars for per game. But you own that game once you get it. So you get the streaming service. You pay the streaming service. What is it uh, for? At least Luna, it's um, what did I say five dollars a month. Yeah, five almost six dollars a month. And for an add-on, you can get the Ubisoft add-on for another fourteen dollars a month. And then you're and if they make you pay for the game. Um. Yeah. So it. Uh, no. I don't. I don't know. That just doesn't seem good to me. I don't think Luna's gonna end up making you pay. Mm. From, from what it looks like, I I pulled it up. I'm looking at it too. From what it looks like, it will probably probably be something like XCloud, where you basically purchase a service and then they give you a library of games that you can pick from. But even with the XCloud ones, like I was kind of disappointed. They I think they started coming out with like newer titles as they're released. But a lot of them, I think PlayStation did the same thing with PS Now, where you could sign up for their subscription service and access an entire library of games. And they were all really old games. It's like, I don't want to play a PlayStation 3 game from, like, like 2000. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to play the new title that's coming out now. Well, this goes down to what we were talking I don't know if you, what we were talking about Netflix, but there was, I was talking about streaming services. There's so many streaming services out there like Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, uh, uh, um, Disney Plus, uh, HBO Max. All these are out there. And then you've got Luna, Stadia, Xbox. Cloud. So, you know, one of the things I have a hard time understanding is all these subscriptions. You're paying for all these subscriptions. Say you're paying for, you know, Luna. And then they add on like Ubisoft. You got fourteen dollars a month plus the five, almost six dollars a month. Actually, it's almost fifteen dollars a month plus six dollars a month. But then you're paying all that on top of your other streaming services. It's like I, I don't know. It just seems like if you're paying that and you already own some of the titles you're playing, and you're like paying an extra monthly subscription to play titles on a screen, I, that just doesn't appeal to me at this point. Yeah, I mean, most of the games I played on the X Cloud because performance was such an issue were very like simplistic games like you could probably find a game that's somewhat similar on the app store I, I had a real hard time playing the really high level games if i i just don't think i'll get a lot of use out of a streaming service like that because i don't play often enough and not it's not to play just 20 games at a time yeah, it's not to say that someone listening says like, wow, I actually do enjoy the streaming service. If you enjoy the streaming service, we're not trying to turn you off from it. I, by far, I actually think it's a cool thing. Like years ago when I, I, for the younger listeners, I could never have imagined streaming a game from my phone, even a movie or a video. Um, so things like this is like stepping stones in the right direction. But I still think that we have a long way to go as far as like making it viable option for like gaming um now that's don't think right now that the xbox and playstation are going to go away because these things are taking over i think that they have a long way to go before they beat out the competition what do you think yeah 
I, I agree. I mean, I'm waiting to see what PlayStation comes up with as far as a streaming service, because I don't think they, if they still do PlayStation now, I'm not positive, but I'd be curious to see what they come up with, because everyone else is coming up with something. Nintendo Switch even has their own, like, library of games, like, old school games that you can play. Yeah. So I think PlayStation is going to be shortly behind, and, I mean, they're going to keep trying to innovate. I think everything's going to be somewhat mobile. We live in a very fast-paced, mobile, instantaneous world. No one wants to wait till they get home to play their video game. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and see, my thing is people are going to be, like, sneaking into the bathroom at work, and they're like, I'm playing, playing, guys, get on, playing Call of Duty. I'm in the bathroom at work, and it's, like, 15 minutes later, an hour later, like, oh, I got to go back to work, and so your boss is like, you're fired. But I don't think that will happen. I'm just, right? When I, when I was doing that, when I was talking about streaming the Vita from my PS4, uh huh. I was working at a corporate job. I had an office job in like a cubicle, and I had decent connection inside that office in that cubicle. So I was actually streaming from my PlayStation at home, and I was playing with my brother. And I was at the office; he was at home, so I was actually playing at work. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> well, now see, I will watch. Don't do mo- that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Nobody, we're not recommending that's a thing, but um, there is people that do that. If you're on Google campus or Facebook campus or something and your boss is like, like, hey, you have a nap room. We have a nap room. You're like, oh, I'll go to the nap room and play video games for like whatever time they give you. That's fine. But when you're working for someone else who doesn't have a nap room, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we I, didn't have a nap room. <laughs> yeah, there's I I don't know if you knew that, but Facebook and Google um companies like that have like swimming pools and and gyms and like nap rooms. Like I I I don't know how true that is, but somebody had once posted like a picture inside, and there was these little pods, sleeping pods inside of Google's campus. I'm just yeah. like, wow, I wish my company had that. I could nap for a 15 minute nap. <laughs> but that's a little topic. But but no, like I I I'd love to see where they take this. But as far as I'm concerned, um, internet speeds, like going back to my internet episode, internet speeds need to get faster. We need to have more accessible internet. And and one of the things that Elon Musk, and this is going a little off topic too, but he's getting that um, Starlink. And Starlink is going to be satellite internet, and it'll be accessible anywhere in the world is what he's saying. And it's like stuff like that, I mean, makes it makes you wonder like, oh, how many more places are going to add internet to their service because it's going to be cheaper, it's going to be better. Um, so having internet accessible to a lot of people, and this is a lot off topic, but having internet accessible to people around the world where they can stream their games if they want to do that would be great. But until that happens, streaming at your house is more likely what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, you figure even when companies started coming out with unlimited data, I mean, I'm thinking of like the Verizons, the Sprints, the T-Mobiles, all of them. I mean, they find a way to get money out of you (laughs) before when they had the data plans they could say okay if you want this high data plan you're gonna have to pay a premium now you have to pay unlimited well now you have to pay a premium for that unlimited but they still find a way to cap you and if you want to not get capped on your un quote unquote unlimited plan you have to pay even more so I i feel like no matter how accessible it is if you want like the high speed high quality stuff Unless someone just goes out of their way and creates something brand new, like if Elon Musk were to say take over the cell phone industry and create like free data plan for everybody, your five dollar a month data plan, they're always going to be like that expense. And I, I mean, I'm personally not going to do that just to stream a game. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. That's it, it's not worth it just to pay that that premium to to stream a game. Um, I know there's some people who are like, well, I'll pay that premium, but yeah, I'm my. I have somehow managed to hit the cap one time on my data, and I'm just like, how? I have unlimited data. I, I mean, well, I can't. I guess I understand why is because I run my business from my phone, and I'm constantly on it. Um, I guess that's why I also stream a lot of video, but most of the time I'm on Wi-Fi when I'm home. But no, I, I, I that's it, it. It will be interesting to see um, how many people get frustrated over the data caps when they're like, uh, how do I hit my data? I, I I'm not supposed to hit. It. I might have unlimited. And those, there's those kids, you know, I'm not trying to dog on anybody, but there's kids who think unlimited means unlimited. And then they hit the data cap and they're like, why is my bill so high? And it's like, well, it's not, unlimited does not mean unlimited. So, yeah, so I, I'll i be interested to see what happens as far as um 
the uh, the amount of data is used. Uh, I would love to see. Actually, I'd love to see some statistics on how much data is used when doing this, um, especially on you know data itself, not just Wi-Fi. So, I think when when you set up for X Cloud, I think when you go into the settings, it actually tells you like how much data streaming at like a certain like what am I thinking quality? Like you're stream, streaming at like 1080 versus like 720. I think it tells you like you can anticipate using up like two gigabytes per hour or five gigabytes per hour of streaming at this quality level. So it kind of gives you an idea, but I guess depending on your service too, that can make a huge difference. Yeah. And um, I know you were, we, we, I want to run back to this, but you were telling me about how you were on Stadia and it's like, it says here free games. You claim, you click right this instant. Or you play right this instant new games every month. Uh, even games for even more, even more games for less. So purchase other games on Stadia. So it's when Stadia came out, I thought everything was you pay for the service, like you said, you pay for the monthly subscription, and you don't have to pay for the games. But here, it clearly says in 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 hidden text that you are paying for the Stadia and the games, and uh, that that's not. Fair. I don't think that's fair. Now we'll see how Amazon Luna is, and, and from what I'm reading too, it doesn't seem like that. But um, you shouldn't. If you're paying a subscription fee, let's say it's fifteen bucks or five dollars, whatever, um, for Luna or Amazon or Luna or Stadia, you shouldn't be having to pay for the games. You already should have that title. So I think that's kind of horrible if they're making you pay extra for the title. That's I, I just pulled up Stadia and I clicked on one of the games. I just clicked on Assassin's Creed. It says buy now on Stadia. Oh, so where, um... they basically just created themselves as like another gaming platform. Only you can take the gaming platform on your phone and you can take it at home. Maybe that's maybe that was the premise behind it. Like yeah. Cloud and Luna, they're trying to come out with a service where you have a library of games online. And Stadia is like rather than having this big library of games online and not being able to take your system with you. Stadia allows you to basically take your system wherever you want because it integrates with mobile, with laptop, with platform, like whatever. So maybe it is kind of like a different market in a sense or kind of a different service than what these other ones that we're talking about are. Yeah, and, and the free games on Stadia are not ones that I ever would play. They don't look, like you said, they look like something I could get on my phone and mm -hmm. play just just as easily like, as far as the App Store. Like, none of these games, except for, I mean, I haven't even played Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and, like, PUBG and Hitman. I would play Hitman, but that's the old one. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing that catches my eye that would want to make me for free that would want to make me do this because it says more games wait for you in the Stadia store. Uh, the games you buy from the store from your go from your screen to screen to screen it's like so you have to buy the main title like cyberpunk or um it's got all the assassin's creeds it's got um final fantasy far cries i mean it's got all these ones but do you really want to pay for that like do you really want to spend that kind of money um and yeah. get those kind of titles if if they're offering like from what Luna sounds like, they're offering those titles for free, and you get to play those mainstream titles as long as you're paying your subscription. Now it did say, and I did read something that Amazon Luna is not going to be always five dollars. That's the starting rate right now, but it will go up, which is understandable as far as streaming goes. See, I think with the Stadia specifically, to me, it's almost like okay, if you were going to buy an Xbox and say. You have to pay ten dollars a month to have that Xbox. You're basically renting the Xbox. And mm -hmm. Now you go ahead and buy those games on top of that. That's how I see it. But then if you look at we're talking about data and all that stuff, now you're paying all the extra data that you're consuming if you're playing on the road. If you're not playing on the road, why would you even pay for the streaming service at all? Why would you not just have the console? Yeah, and I don't know. It, it it comes down to people are like, well, but I can do it from my phone. Yeah, well, if you want to pay the data, that's fine. But if you're if you think about it like this, Stadia, you're paying for the games, you know, for free. They say free. You get to play these weird off title games, but then you have to pay for the main title games and your data and the you know Stadia or Luna. It's like 
you're paying all these subscription fees. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you cap out your data, you're paying more for your data, you're paying more to buy those games. You know, it, it all comes down to would you rather like like you said, I would rather have my Xbox buy those titles, have them in my digital library, pay the sixty dollars for a whole year, have that year subscription, not be paying extra monthly thing, at least for me, and play whenever I want. I mean, that's just me, but I, I just think having a, a streaming service where you're paying extra for games and then streaming them to your phone and just to stream them to your phone uh, just seems kind of off putting. I, I think I, yeah, I completely agree with you. I think if we're going to talk at all about success of the streaming services, I think it's really going to come down to the titles that those streaming services have. Because oh, and, and especially found... for free, especially for free. If you're offering up a service and they aren't free and people have to pay extra for those, I, I think it's going to be a trouble. I think that's why Stadia is failing is because they said, oh, you can play any game for free, but they didn't tell you what games you can play for free. And I think that's what's really killing it as far as a franchise goes. Right. I see that them both are kind of like Xbox. I keep coming back to Xbox. That's what I'm familiar with. And Stadia. With Stadia, you have to purchase the games that you want to play, whereas Xbox, you pay the same monthly fee or $5 extra or whatever, and you can play those same games. Granted, yeah. I don't think that it's a full library because they want you to purchase the Xbox games. Mm. So they kind of leave out some of the major hitting. I don't think you can play Call of Duty on Xbox Cloud. I don't think that's an option. They don't give it to you. So if someone like Luna came out with it and said, hey, you could play literally any game you want for 15 bucks a month, I think that's the platform that's going to do well because people are going to, I mean, they know they're going to get the newest game when it comes out, and that's a lot of people will, I mean, hell, wait in line to get the new Madden game. Yeah. If, yeah. X, if X Cloud can't give me the new game, the new Madden game on opening day, why would I go with them? I'm going to be waiting in line for Madden. Yep, yep. Well, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I know we kind of got a little off topic, especially with data caps and stuff. And I know that's that's not what this episode is about, but it is a major part of streaming. Like people don't realize that you will max out your data. And I actually uh, have thought about that a lot when streaming uh, at different places. So, um, yeah. So thank you for tuning in today. Uh, tune in on Saturday to hear Nick and me discuss uh, Amazon uh, and the company. I know I've already talked about Amazon in a previous episode, but Nick and me are going to dive more into Amazon and the company, uh, more about Jeff Bezos and his stepping down. So tune in to find out. Thanks again for joining me, Nick. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me, man.